Hi, welcome back to Elder Gal, I'm Allison. So are we too obsessed with happiness? Are we too obsessed with being happy all the time? You know, I talked to, about this a little bit on my live stream this past Saturday and it really got me thinking again about it that it's always been kind of a an irritation to me how focused us Americans are and particularly on the idea of, well, just be happy. Just be happy, no matter what, whatever's going on in your life, just be happy. I always thought it was a little bit too much of a platitude. So we're gonna do a, an exploration of this word today on my channel and talk about what it means. You know, is it just semantics, the word happiness? Is that what it is? Is it, is it a stand-in for other kinds of feelings we have? So let's explore that today. That's gonna be the topic of this video. What's the deal with happiness and are we too obsessed with it, especially in the United States? Let me give that disclaimer because I think we're more obsessed with it here than probably anywhere else in the world. So let's go back to the origins of this in our country. Well, if you look at the Declaration of Independence written by Thomas Jefferson, he and I went to the same college, by the way. Uh, no, I'm not that old, but anyway, he said in the Declaration of Independence, and I wanna get it right, so I'm gonna read it on here. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, is that where this all started for us as a country? I don't know, I don't know. And I honestly don't know what Tom meant by the pursuit of happiness. I'm sure he didn't mean trips to Disneyland because that didn't exist back then. But, but what did he mean? We don't know. I think what he meant is people ought to be able to enjoy their life, do what they want to do. You know, most people at that time in history, you know, lived on the land. Even if they didn't own their own land or just had a small plot of land, they worked their own land. And I think his point was that you are able to enjoy your life without persecution from the state. I mean, the whole purpose of the Declaration of Independence was basically to declare our independence from England. So the thing is, I, I think he meant something different than what developed later on. But I, but I will say that the concept of being happy in the United States, I think also, I had some viewers comment on this uh, after my live stream on, on this past weekend. And they, they said something like, well, I think when immigrants came to this country, they came with like a sense of hope and dreams and like a sense of this was gonna make them happy. Whether it actually did or not, that's another story. But the point is maybe that was their their you know whole purpose their whole aim was to find a place that was safe that was going to be prosperous for them and their family now unfortunately a lot of those people didn't make it either they literally didn't make it and didn't survive in some form or another or they did but their lives were not particularly happy and some of them probably were happy. I mean, there was probably a mixed bag of that going on. It all ties in again to that concept of the American dream, which is, you know, arguably uh, dead on arrival at this point in time, or at least on life support. But at one point in time, that was a very real concept to people, that they could come here and have a possibility of a better life for them and their family. So maybe that's tied up with this whole idea of happiness and optimism. And that's great if that's what it was. But I think it's gone further than that now. I think it's a lot further than that. So if we look back to the 1960s, I think that's, because when I was young, I remember this whole thing of, well, just be happy. You know, just be happy. And I think that was heightened by the hippie culture of the late 1960s. The idea of just enjoy life, you know, just be happy, just do what you want. And a lot of people attribute that to, to people like Bob Marley, but actually Bob Marley never said, you know, just be happy. He basically said, don't worry about a thing. He didn't, <laughs> or every little thing, everything's gonna be all right. Every little thing's gonna be all right. He never said, don't worry, be happy. That actually started with Meher Baba, who was an Indian spiritual guru in the 1960s, who you know really like spread that to his followers, and then that 
ended up on like, you know, buttons and bumper stickers and things like that. So I think that's where what we call the current incarnation of the concept of being happy came from, is that whole, oh, don't worry, just be happy. And a lot of times people needed drugs to do that, let's be real, okay? In the 60s and 70s, there was lots of drugs, as there are now, but there were lots of happy drugs back then. And people took a lot of drugs to have that sense of happiness. Now to me, that's not inherent happiness if you need a substance to create it, okay? That's my opinion. I don't think that's real happiness. So. I'm doing this part of the video uh, in an undisclosed location, and uh, I'll pick up when I get home. Hey, I'm back from my undisclosed location. Actually, it's not that mysterious. It was just one of the uh, rec rooms that we have on the property that's adjacent to a laundry room, and nobody was in there. And I was going to film it outside, but the uh, sun was too bright, actually, still at this time of day. So I had to improvise. So anyway, I'm back home in my studio within a studio. It's kind of like an inception idea, isn't it? <laughs> I'm in a studio within a studio. <laughs> okay, see, that's me being momentarily happy, you see? I'm really good at being happy in the moment, in a transitory way, like being happy for a few minutes or an hour or whatever. I'm really good at that. I'm really good at enjoying the small things in life, which is part of being happy. But as far as this elusive concept that we have, that everything always has to be happy, everything has to be joyful, everything has to be, you know, incredible at all times, it's, it's over the top for me, okay? And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video. I'm sorry, total adjustments here. I know, this is real life going on, real filming going on. So the thing is, is I, it, when I did my live stream, I was talking about a student that, um, a, a foreign exchange student that I had when I was in graduate school for anthropology, and he was attending our graduate program, and he was from France. And we were taking this wonderful course called the Anthropology of American Culture, which is still to date best course I've ever had in school. And... Uh, I remember several times during the semester, he would bring up things about his observations of American culture, which was totally, you know, appropriate given the class. And I just remember him talking about he was puzzled by our us Americans having an obsession with always being happy, that there always had to be some joyful activity going on or something to look forward to or a great vacation or but there always had to be this happy thing and it really puzzled him because he shared that in France people didn't have that attitude like people in France he said were much more again this is from his perspective but he said they were much more focused on the reality of life that sometimes you're going to be happy and sometimes you're going to be miserable and everywhere in between and his point was that that in France people just they deal better with the unhappy than he saw Americans deal with the unhappy I guess that's a good way to say it. He said, you know, when people are miserable in France, you know, they, they sit at the cafes with their friends and they drink wine and, you know, they have cheese and bread or what, you know, whatever. And he said, and they commiserate to each other. And he says, that's how we get through it. But he said, you know, we don't fake happiness when we're not happy. We don't, we don't have to put on a false front. And I've noticed myself that in the United States, we do tend to do that. We have this fake happy face. You know, we have to smile through our pain. You know, maybe that, that came a lot from the English too, the, you know, our ancestor uh, country, where, uh, you know, the idea of having a stiff upper lip even when things were bad. Well, maybe in the United States, it translated more from a stiff upper lip to a happy smile. Maybe that was it. And so the thing is, is that People have an obsession, an increasing obsession, with always being happy. And they have to keep buying things or doing things or finding some way to sustain that level of happiness. And unfortunately, a lot of them do drugs, like I was talking about in the 1960s, where a lot of this concept originated um, of the, you know, don't worry, just be happy f concept. So I think it is kind of a false kind of way of being. 
there's nothing wrong with happiness. Happiness is a part of life. It really is. But but it may be just semantics here that I'm talking about. But to me, happiness is not something you feel 24-7 at the same level. Let me say that again. You don't feel it 24-7 at the same level all the time. Happiness comes and goes. It's a transitory, fleeting kind of thing in our lives, brought about by events and people and things that we're enjoying. You know, when you go to Disneyland for the first time, as I did in my uh, mid-20s, no, late 20s, I was my only late 20s the first time I went to Disneyland, and boy, was I happy. I was. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I've been to Disneyland a total of three times. I've always been happy when I'm actually there. That's great. But it's not like it sustains for weeks and months after. It's a, it's a transitory happiness, which is what it's supposed to be. You know, they've built themselves the happiest place on earth. Okay, when I'm there, that's what I feel. That's what I feel. But it doesn't mean that you're supposed to have that 24-7 your whole life. And I think that's one of our problems. So I don't think it's just semantics. I think it's it's a problem of intention, of, of the way we perceive things. I think we've gotten ourselves into a happiness trap. I think we've gotten ourselves into a happiness trap. And to me, this is how, again, I am not, the, I don't even purport to be the expert on all things happy. I don't. When I was growing up, I had, I've always been able to enjoy things and always had happiness, but, but I had a lot of problems when I was little and I had a lot of loss and I had a lot of grieving and I had, you know, I was not very optimistic most of the time. I'm actually much more optimistic now than I was when I was like 12 years old. But the point is, I also know it's unrealistic to be happy all the time. So again, it could just be semantics on my part. But I prefer to think of it as being grateful, for instance, being uh, fulfilled. In other words, doing something in life that you enjoy so that you feel fulfilled by it. Also, being peaceful, being content in your life. In other words, being happy. <laughs> okay, I'm holding the microphone with one so I can only do one air quote there. But anyway, being happy with where you are in your life. But that's not the kind of happy feeling that we're pushing out there. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. If you're living in the United States, or even if you're not living in the United States, but you've had a lot of encounters with Americans, you know exactly what I, what I mean by this. There is this obsession with this happiness. So what do I say about it? I say, we're doing ourselves a disservice. We're actually hurting our own happiness by being obsessed with being happy. We're, 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 we're actually at cross purposes with this, okay? If you're actively thinking of how you can make yourself happy all the time and you're putting on the false smile and the happy demeanor because you know that's what society wants to see, that doesn't make it real. It makes it you wearing a mask is what it makes it. Now, let's get to this topic because, again, as someone who taught psychology and was a therapist, I do know that there is a certain amount of fake it till you make it. You know what I mean? Like if you smile a lot and you're upbeat about things, generally, will that improve your mood? Yes, it will. But but I think... Again, this focus on happiness, happiness, happiness all the time. You know, I remember my son coming to visit me once when he was a teenager, when I used to live in Flagstaff, Arizona. And I was going through a particularly difficult personal thing at the time. And, uh, and my son was being wonderful. He was probably about 15, and this was still the good years where we had connection with each other and whatever. But I remember him even sitting on the, on the bed with me and him saying, Mom, why can't you just be happy? And and I didn't get into an argument with him about it, but I thought, see, he's getting that too. He's getting that from the culture. Just be happy. I know I never told him that because I've always had this kind of knee-jerk response to this mindless focus on happiness. It's always really bugged me. Now, you don't have to agree with me. I've talked about this in this video. You don't have to agree with me at all. 
And uh, my apologies to Thomas Jefferson if he really meant that people should walk around really happy and smiling all the time. I don't think that's what Tom meant, but if he did, apologies to him. We all have a right to our own opinion about this. And my opinion, which is shared by a lot of people around the world, you know, Americans are not always well liked around the world. And actually, one of the things people don't like about us is that we can seem very fake. We can seem very fake. And I've seen this firsthand when I've been in other countries, so I know it's a, it's a thing. And the thing is, is that if you're doing something that other people are noticing isn't real, then maybe you need a, to look inside, you know, and really, really probe that and figure out what that is. Because if, if you're just slapping a smile on your face and going out and trying to be cheery because that's what society tells you to do, I think you take a long, hard look at that. Do what comes from your own heart and your own soul. That's what I do. Gratitude for me is easy. And to me, that's real. Because when I'm grateful for something, that's really coming from a real place inside me. I'm not doing it because somebody out there told me to do it. Now, gratitude is not the same as happiness, technically, but it has an overlapping kind of feeling with it. I kind of call it the softer, the softer positive feelings are from like gratitude, contentment, fulfillment, things like that, that, that are not always loud and in your face and like, like, oh, I've got to be happy. You know, I got to just focus on that. No, these are quiet things that you build inside. And that is what I do. And that's what I advocate people do, because I think it provides a lot more substance, a lot more lasting kind of positive feelings inside ourselves. So you can disagree with me, and that's great. Please drop your comments below, either positive uh, or negative. <laughs> please drop your comments below about this concept of happiness. But you know what? Point bottom line for me is let's just stop trying to be happy all the time and let's focus on actually truly being grateful for our lives, enjoying the small moments, getting the most, focusing on the now, living in the present. That's what to me builds more of a lasting feeling. So that's my take. Until next time, be well, be kind, keep moving forward, and take care. Bye.